The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in your field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink? Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It feels fitting that just one week after we spent our worship time together giving thanks for the harvest and giving thanks for all that God has provided, that we are again talking about seeds. Just one week after we gave thanks for the produce and crops and all the bounty that comes forth at this time of year, suddenly we are asking for more. Increase our faith, say the disciples. This doesn't just come out of the blue from them. They heard Jesus, just in these verses before it, lay down some very heavy teaching. He says... Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for one of you to cause these little ones to stumble. Be on guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender, and if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. There's a lot of musts in there, aren't there? You must forgive. You must not cause another to stumble. We know those things aren't easy. So it's no wonder we hear the disciples thinking, how can we do that? This is... Really tough stuff. Lord, give us strength. Increase our faith. I also know we struggle with faith. We struggle with being able to forgive anyone and everyone for all the things that are done to us. We struggle with talking to others about faith or about God because we feel like we don't know enough. What if they ask us a question we don't know the answer to? We struggle about talking about the Bible because we may not know every single word of it and we don't want to embarrass ourselves. We struggle with inviting people to church, with trusting resources to God, with trusting our struggles and questions to God. I mean, it's no wonder that this cry seems so familiar. Increase our faith. So what does Jesus say in reply? If you had faith the size of a mustard seed. You could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And I bet a lot of us, when we hear that, start to think, well, I don't have power to magically will this giant tree to rise up from the ground, float away, and get planted into the sea. So I obviously don't have enough faith, and certainly not the kind of faith it takes to do that. Wow, Lord, don't just increase my faith. Give me any sort of faith to start with. And all that makes me start thinking there's got to be more to something like this. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Jesus wasn't a magician. And he's not trying to teach his disciples to be magicians at all. Yeah, he did miracles, but this whole moving a tree thing feels less like a miracle, less like something that he expects to happen, and more of maybe a metaphor of what could happen. 
Thinking like that has helped me hear it differently. Maybe it's more like if you had even an ounce of faith, the tiniest tidbit of faith, just imagine the things you could do. Forgiving someone, which often feels monumental, is a cinch. Not causing another person to stumble doesn't require a second thought. I mean, you could figuratively move mountains. But yet there's still a voice in us that says we still should think again. I remember talking to someone one time about an accident that had involved someone they knew quite well. And this accident left this person uh, struggling for their life. So when I asked this person who I was talking to how they were doing, they said, you know, one part of my brain says that if we had the faith the size of a mustard seed, things would turn out all right. But the logical side of my brain says the human body can only handle so much. Doesn't that sum up our struggles? We want to have faith, both, both in the good times and in those times where we don't have anything else to lean on. But it feels like there are times that that faith just doesn't hold up. And we can't ignore that tension, that tension between faith and what we would often call reality. You know, that tension is what causes this teaching of Jesus to be so important. Because this culture that we live in and this world that surrounds us and our human nature all tell us, hey, be realistic. The human body can only take so much. You can't magically cause a tree to uproot and plant itself somewhere else. Sure, you can forgive someone, but you'll never fully get over what they've done to you. And you can wish for or even pray for a miracle, but what are the chances that's actually going to happen? I have to confess that I really struggle with this. I think I'm very often trying to be realistic. I feel like I'm often too cynical sometimes. I feel like I need to be in control of things, and I can be in control of things if I try hard enough. So it feels like Jesus is really speaking to me. A little faith can go a long way there. So I was talking with, about this with another pastor friend of mine, and, and we were discussing what this faith might look like and discussing what God may or may not do because of it. And this person said to me, what makes you think you can limit God? What makes you, Stephen Zeller, believe that God can only do so much or that God couldn't do those things? God can literally do anything, right? Right? We believe and confess that our God is a sovereign God. We believe and confess our God is an omnipotent God. And once we have just an ounce or a tidbit of that kind of faith, faith that doesn't live in God's abilities, imagine the possibilities. When we're faced with an unending amount of hurting and pain and sickness, Imagine the healing that can happen when we have even the tiniest amount of faith that God truly can heal. And maybe not even just healing for the other person, but healing and understanding for ourselves. Of course, this healing doesn't always happen the way we want it to or look like how we expect it to, but our faith tells us this is in God's hands. Or when we look at the world and feel as if there's no hope for the world, and the only way things could even possibly get better if God wipes the slate completely clean once again, if we have the faith to believe that, yes, indeed, this world can be changed and hatred can end and all people can have dignity of life and peace can fill this all, imagine what God can do. Maybe it's the fear in us that will be pulled out by the roots if we have the faith to believe that God is limitless. It's still hard, but we're assured that even the tiniest amount of faith can do incredible and amazing things. Plus the fact that the disciples asked Jesus to increase our faith and not increase my faith, that should show us that we are in all of this together. Thanks be to God. Amen.